It's time now for the Matt and Todd Show with Big Matt and Diamond D. Good evening, Chucky County. This is Big Matt. Diamond Dean sitting across from me. What's going on, Todd? How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Happy New Year. Happy New Year, brother. Uh, it's not been a good one so far with this rain. I mean. It's been a long day, and it feels like we need to build an ark, put all the animals <laughs> on or something. And yeah, it's been pretty bad. I mean, it's probably what, when it ran two or three inches? They were giving, I heard they was going to give up to six at one time. Well, as long as it ain't like last February, I'll be all right. Yeah, I had to wear water boots even to the bathroom. If somebody... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that got that got bad. As a matter of fact, I think the schools were out for a week. Yeah, I remember that. Speaking of bad, I think we may have missed on our pick with Auburn, Minnesota. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, yeah, we were way off on that. I did think Auburn would win, but uh, I thought it would be close, but I picked it wrong. We both did. Looks like we had, you had Auburn 27, Minnesota 21. And I had 28-17 Auburn. Uh, we're going to get into that game in a little bit. Also, we, we're we going to talk about the uh, Alabama-Michigan game. We're going to break into that. Looks like I had 36-17. Todd had 31-19. We were both Boy, very, we about nailed that, didn't we? We were both really close. I think they, uh, uh, they played good, so we're going to talk about that a little more. Yeah. First, we're going to talk about the Volunteers. We just had recently played. Tell us a little bit about that. They're going to finish the season eight and five this year. Eight and five after that terrible start. You know they lost to Georgia State, which he took a lot of heat over that. Jeremy Pruitt yep. did. Then they lost to BYU on the last play of the game. Yes, literally. Right. I mean, pretty much ten seconds left, and yeah. start out zero and two. I had I worked with a guy that's a Tennessee fan. He didn't think they'd win a ga- game or two. He said they'll beat Chattanooga. That'll be it. I'm like, well, there's no way that's going to come. They're going to do better than that. They do a lot better than that. They finish 8-5. And and actually, they were down 22-9 to in this in the fourth quarter. And let me go back to the third quarter. Guarantano, their quarterback, threw a pick six. And uh, Pruitt took him out. I thought that would kind of be it for Tennessee. I didn't know if they could pull through that. They were already down. Right, and then he's going to change the quarterback, which I guess is what he had to do. I mean, it seemed like he had worked for Saban before, so well, everybody's he, following suit with that kind of trend, I guess. Well, he took him out. The other quarterback come in and did all right. Had a, they had a good drive. Might have got a field goal out of it. No, no, excuse me. They didn't get a field goal out of it, but they drove the ball pretty good. Next series, Guarantano's back in, and he obviously led them. They led on the scoring drive, made it 22-16. to 16. Guarantano led that drive. Then Pruitt goes for an onside kick. Tennessee gets it, and they score and go ahead 23-22. Indiana drove back down and did try a 52-yard field goal, which you're never going to get onto a kid for missing a 52-yarder. No. I mean, you can't. That's above. You can't say nothing. To, that's a big time. That's like a half-court shot or a, what do you call it, at the end of a game, a Hail Mary. You can't, you can't say nothing to nobody for missing a 52 and Tennessee wins 23-22. They so they're stepped gonna, up. They're going to finish the season 8-5. Uh, eight and, eight and five. five. That's not bad, Coach Pruitt. They're going to have an eight, you know, win eight games and where he's at. And uh, recruiting-wise, he did well. They're, they're getting some players. Um, they give him a few years, and we'll see a lot of positive things out of him. And on, on a positive note for the Gator fans out there, you guys are going to finish 11-2. and two. It's like you had 500 yards or so against Virginia. We watched that game pretty closely. They finished out... Uh, 36 to 28 beating Virginia. Uh, Virginia is not a bad team. They're a good second team that hangs around there in the SEC. They're kind of like, um, kind of remind me of like an A&M maybe in the SEC. Mm-hmm. You know, like a, they're somewhere in the middle there. They were not bad at all. They, they were, were good, but better not give them credit. Right. That was a not a bad game, and it was tight for a long time. Yeah. But Perrine, the running back for Florida, he just out. went wild. Yeah. He had a good game. I think he had 200 yards. He had close to it catching, receiving catching, end. Yeah. yeah, catching and rushing. He, uh, he had a good game. And Trask had a good it's game. It's going to be bad if they lose him. Uh, now, Trask, um, he misses some on, on some third down throws. He was He's short on a few. You're not a huge fan of Trask, are well, you? Well, I just ain't never 
I never thought he would, he, he don't finish well in situations. And me and some uh, Florida fans on a on media page talk back and forth, and they agree. It's, he's been given the reins early, and he went through some some problems, and he worked through those. But he just seems to fall short in mm. in certain situations. Then he'll be big like on a first down right, if they throw. Right. But then on third and five, if they throw it, he misses him. Right? I don't know. He just I don't know what it is. He, he, he looks good and he looks the part, but... Looks like they're going to go with him, though. Yeah, oh, yeah definitely. I mean, I mean they, they finished season 11-2. and two. Right, right. 11-2 is not bad. They'll finish no, with a top absolutely not. eight ranking. And I thought the quarterback for Virginia, for Virginia, Bryce Perkins, was. I thought he was very good. I do, too. I, you know, I told you we watched, um, I watched him play Clemson. He's not bad. No, no, he's not at you all. Now, Clemson... Could have scored a hundred on their defense, right? If wanted right. to be, yeah. But he, he didn't play bad. Um, yeah, it was a good game. So looks like the SEC uh, is going to finish. They're going to have a seven and two. Seven and two, right? Well, now. depending on what Could happens. Be eight two if mm-hmm. if, if uh, LSU beats Clemson later. And we're going we're going to get in that on the next show. We're going to cut that down as fine as we can cut it and talk about a lot of different aspects of that game, uh, defensive matchups, player matchups. We're going to get into that on the next show. Uh, so again, we thank you guys for tuning in at WDKR, and uh, thank Shane for all the work and time that he puts in. So we're going to carry on here. I'm going to tear off with the sugar bowl right here. A little bit of history, uh, a little side note maybe. Tulane Stadium was the stadium when they first played this game. 1927, the idea came about to these people. And in January of 35, it was Tulane University. Uh, 1942 was Fordham versus Missouri played there. The score was two to nothing. For who? Fordham versus Missouri. Really? 1942. And the final was two to nothing, which was scored on a safety by Fordham in the first quarter. That was a defensive game. In the first quarter, they scored two points, and the game finished two to nothing. Two to nothing. I take it they didn't throw it much back then. Now, uh, later on, see, 74 was the last game there, which was Nebraska beat Florida 13 to 10. Uh, mm-hmm. 75 was the first year they moved to the Superdome, which is when Bama beat Penn State 13 to six. There is a 17 million dollar payout in the in the Sugar Bowl, as of estimated about two years ago. It's the, a big bowl. That's big just bowl. a little history on the Sugar Bowl. Looks like Georgia starters being out. Did you see how many starters they had out? They had several. They had 13 like players. 13 players. Six starters were out. Three offense and three defense. Um, McGay he their defenses back. But it seems like it, it didn't cost them much. It seemed like they went win the game anyway. They had 380 total yards. Baylor had 295 total. They've never beat Georgia. Uh, Coach Matt Rowe, this is the second time they've played in the Sugar Bowl. The first time was in 57. They had uh, 130 rushing against third, against 61 rushing for Baylor. So When Swift didn't even play. I mean, he was on. He went in a little bit, but for the most part, they didn't give him the ball. No. And uh, Fromm looked pretty sharp the other night. And of course, Pickens, well, their receiver, had a great game. And I didn't know this till today. He's from Hoover. I, yeah, I got. I was going to get into that. I learned about some of that because I had seen he. You know, he was the one that got in trouble Georgia Tech game. Mm-hmm. Got in the so fight. I got to dig around and on some information about him. Uh, looks like they had two fifty passing. Better had two thirty four. So that's pretty close. Time of the game was like thirty two minutes. Georgia twenty seven to. Uh, Baylor, the, of course, Georgia won a, a title there in what, 80? 1980. 1980. Yeah. Uh, oh, we know that because Georgia people, people that aren't Georgia fans, usually bring that up to Georgia fans. Well, they were down 19 you know, nothing. Yeah, one one since 80. They were down 19 nothing at half, right? It right. ended up being 26 14. Of course, Georgia won. Uh, quarterback uh, Brewer at Baylor, uh, I mean, he had. Uh, he had 234 yards passing, so I mean they held on, but it kind of went the way we thought it would. That we watched it; it was Baylor, pretty much dominated by Georgia. Yeah, their defense just better defense couldn't couldn't stop Georgia. Uh, no, and it was one of the better. You know, Georgia struggled on offense here, especially towards the end of the year, and they didn't seem to the other night at all. No, they were you clicking know. on all cylinders. Did you know in '42 was their first ball? They played TCU. Georgia did. Beat them 40 to 26. 40 to 26. Yeah, beat TCU. So TCU, they've been kicking around for a while. Their first Sugar Bowl was 47. They beat North Carolina 20 to 10. Fromm was 20 for 30. 
uh, about 250 yards I was talking about, two touchdowns. Um, I say from the, they had a fake kick that may have sealed the deal for them. Uh, and then White winds up handing them in, in, into the end zone. The Georgia receiver, Pickens, he's the MVP of the game, he helped out a lot. He had 12 catches for 175 yards. 12 for 175. Look out next year. He's a freshman. Wow. Yeah, he's a kid. Um, Zamir White had 18 carries for 92 yards and a touchdown. Uh, they got the job done, and just they, they overcome the diversity like we talked about. We want them to come in and see if they're going to play focused. What we mm-hmm. talked about last show, we hope they would, and I think they have. The 13 players out, man. It's a lot to overcome. He almost beat, I think he tied Heinz Ward's record for yards, but he had Heinz had 12 catches in a bowl game, so he had almost tied him. Uh, of course, number one, George Pickens. He's from Hoover. Some places list him as 6'3", Todd, and one place have him at 6'5". And looking at him play and looking at him next to other players, he looks 6'5 to me. He's pretty tall. I mean, he's a he he like big guy. He's perfect, you know, as far as his body type. Him and Cager, the other receiver that was out. Now, I don't think Georgia – Georgia actually had a lot of injuries in this game. Yes. Uh, I mean, they did have some people sitting out for probably, draft stuff. Probably but. five or six injured. Right. And six legit uh, starters. Not You know, so I appreciate, you know, we can – as Georgia fans, I'm sure they're, they're happy if they got the win. And uh, looks like uh, they bounced back. Uh, and I'm proud of Pickens. It's good to see a, a young man – to come from the fight that he had, let's temper get a hold of him, mm-hmm. and he comes back and plays a good game. See, he only got to play a half against uh, LSU. And, they, you know, I'm sure, I don't think he would have made the difference, just to be honest, but still, you know, to finally get an SEC championship game and have to sit out the first half. Well, George was, got uh, to fight. I'm glad that it's good to see a kid come back from to be, I hate that, that we to measure them that way right, by right. a bad action. Mm-hmm. Now, this is great for him to come back and say, you know, I could be measured by this. Right, get the MVP of the game. Georgia wins the Sugar Bowl. Uh, looks like 82 Sugar Bowl, they lost to Penn State 27-23. They didn't go back for like 16 years. In 02, they beat Florida State 26-13. So, uh, Kirby lost to Bama, of course, 23-26 and 17. And then uh, they they lost to uh, Texas. Texas last year. Last year. So, uh and they, I'll say this was big for them because of that. It is. You know, to respond after last year's loss to say, okay, obviously you're not inspired. Uh, Kirby must have gotten in the locker room and said, let's not be remembered as that team that – Blew that Texas game. If we don't play for a big game or for a big trophy, mm-hmm. we're not even going to show up. The Sugar Bowl was a great game. I'll give you a little bit of history about the Sugar Bowl. Mm-hmm. It's been around a long time. Uh, they actually dealt from the idea from the Rose Bowl. We've been around a long time before – and the people there in New Orleans said, hey, we, we can have something like that here. So since, um, you know, late 20s, early 30s, it's kind of been around. So it's a big bowl game, and it's good for, for Georgia to, to win that. Well, I thought it was good because, like I said, a lot of people, and, you know, who knows? That may not have been true. Maybe Texas just beat them. But, you know, it was believed by a lot that they just didn't show up for the Sugar Bowl last year yeah, pretty much mentally. Some like yeah, a lot of SEC teams and, uh, have but, a mental letdown. They don't want to show up in the Sugar Bowl. Right, right. And it seemed like this year everybody did show up. Yeah, and uh, speaking of showing up, have you seen that um, I read just, just before uh, earlier, uh, listeners, that Dylan Moses' father had talked to his lawyer. About yeah, his, yeah, it's on hold. His claws, but... Seeing how his stock was going to be, and at the last paragraph said that he is coming back okay. because of the injury. They were not sure of the rating he would get. That he may be a second round pick because of the injury, and not, they're not seeing play. So, I wouldn't think he would be a first round. So the last paragraph said he's coming back to play. Leatherwood's coming back. That's, right. that's, that's, that's a good, good sign. Maybe to uh, who knows? We'll know about Rugs and Smith and Judy. I here watched soon. Uh, uh, a special on. Um, a lady that covers college football, and she's close with Bama down there. She does a lot of reporting. She thinks that he's coming back. Reason being, this, this is what she said, because he's such a family-oriented person. He's, mm-hmm. so close, he, he's so close with his daddy and his brother that he would like to stay and be with his brother and mentor him mm-hmm. and, and rub elbows with him a little bit there at Bama before taking off. 
that he would probably be a 15th pick in the first round. He comes back and has a good year. He could wind up being top five because this year there's a lot of quarterbacks coming out. Right. Next year it looks like looks like it's just going to be the Trevor Lawrence show. Mm-hmm. Next draft pick. Nah, next draft. Yeah. So you could have two and Trevor Lawrence. So that's a little little side note there that I picked up earlier. So it's good to see players coming back. Uh, to, to want to play their senior year. It looks like they, they have something in mind, a maybe. goal that they have. So that'd be exciting for Alabama and, and the university and, and Coach Saban. Maybe that'll start a trend. You know, I'd like to. I like to see kids playing their senior year. I like to see kids playing, you know, at least a little longer than they're supposed to. I personally think it's ruined college basketball. Oh, man. Yeah, with so them leaving. We could do, we're going to do, we do a show and, on that later. We yeah. will. We will. And it's starting to go on in football. You know, there's been a lot of questionable players leave early, but it seems like it's moved back the other way this this time. So much they have something to play for. Right. That's good. What do you got on us on for the Oh Wisconsin you know, Oregon? Yeah, it was a great game. Yeah, of course good. Rose Bowl's always been a fantastic matchup, always between the Big Ten a Big Ten team and a Pac twelve. If they don't make the final four, they automatically go to I the Rose Bowl this game. Winning. I- I, I completely thought that Wisconsin would win the game. Well, and they did in every aspect except one thing, turnovers. 28-27, Oregon wins. Oregon blocked a punt. A guy named Brady Breeze blocked a punt and run it back for a touchdown. Then later in the game, Wisconsin with the lead, driving the football. Brady Breeze causes a fumble, and they recover it, and they hold on to win 28-27. Too many turnovers just cost Wisconsin the game. 216 yards, Matt. Mm. That's how many yards Oregon had, and they won. Yeah, that, that's not, it's not like them. They usually have a 500-yard days <laughs> where they run 90 plays. You know, they're usually wide open, super speed. And, I mean, Wisconsin outgamed them. They outrushed them. They just dominated them, but they lost. Mm. And, and now Oregon's going to probably finish fourth or fifth, I would think. And, uh, and that's a good recruiting tool for Cristobal. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad for him. He he did okay at Bama. I wasn't ever a big fan of his there, I guess. He wasn't only there for... He wasn't there long, a couple year, of years, a year maybe. Or two. Yeah. So that's good for him. Glad he got the win. And, uh, and there was a questionable call towards the end of the game, an offensive pass interference. But it didn't cost Wisconsin the game. It happened. It would have given them a first down but they were still in their own territory. We don't know. He might have thrown an interception on the next play. Right. But, uh, you know, the, they were pretty upset over that call, and I didn't think it was a good call. It was a – the offensive player kind of – they just kind of got in a battle with each other, him and the DB, so they called pass interference. I'm talking about like he was blocking it. Yeah. And uh, called pass interference. They took the first down from him. They had to punt. I don't even – they might have got it back, but couldn't do nothing with it. But Taylor had a good game. He had 94 yards to finish out another year with 2,000 yards. That's two 2,000-yard seasons now for him. I'm a fan of his. I'm, I'm excited to see him play next level, see where, where his future carries him. Seems like a good a good young man. He's humble, quiet, he works is. hard. And as far as I know, he's coming back. That would be, be another good thing. Well, if he That's comes back and stays healthy, he'll be the all-time leading rusher, I'm sure, in college football history. That's amazing. I'd like to see him get an invite. Maybe, you know, he's working towards that, trying to get that invite <laughs> to New York since he got I would, looked over this year. I would think that he would be the front runner come next season if he stays. Yeah. I just don't see how you – Him and Trevor Lawrence and Tua. If Tua comes back, right. you would think that would be your three. And then there'll be – there's always some guy that we yeah. don't even think of that comes out of nowhere. Like Joe Burrow. Yeah, it just shows up and plays, you know. I don't know. There may be some other young man step up out there. Um, I, you kind of like to see the Pac-12 get their things together out there. I mean, how many Rose Bowls have they played in? I mean, you know, the I know it, how many. I know that's their game, but how many Rose Bowls has Oregon played in? Oregon has not played in many Rose Bowls. So not at, not many at all. But they have more, more in the BCS area. They've been there a lot more, but now up until the BCS area, it was usually USC, Washington, maybe UCLA, some. Yeah. But uh, Oregon, most of their uh, appearances in the Rose Bowl have been in the BCS area. Hmm. 
era, not area. I'm sorry, <laughs> BCS era. And Wisconsin, you know, they've made this game a few times. Yeah. And Wisconsin's got a good football team. I enjoy watching Wisconsin, but they just. I told somebody the other day, I said, as good as this team is, it just seems like they're going to drop one or two every year. And uh, as good as their program is, and like this one here, 28-27. And, I mean, they outplayed them in every aspect of the game. But turnovers killed them. And uh, the, the bowl game of the year is, is Kentucky. Oh, wow, wow. They, You know, they had a – it was just a good game. What well, Snell was there, receiver, running back – turn quarterback and wins the game on a throw at the end of the game. Yeah, yeah. Bowden. Bowden. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's unbelievable. I mean, I was, he never got in a fight before the game. Did you see that? Yes, I did. And some people suggested that he shouldn't have even played in the game for the altercation. But, I mean, that happens with kids. But he had 233 yards rushing. It's good to be passionate about the game. There's nothing wrong with that. So that's two straight years in a row. Kentucky, and you were mentioned Snail, have had an excellent yeah. running back. I think Stoops is on the right track up there. Well, what we talked about a show or two ago, their family and coaching. Mm-hmm. They've all been good coaches. You know, they come from a good tree of coaches. I think their dad, I read somewhere, somehow, I may be wrong, you can check me on this. We're just talking here. Uh, was affiliated with Belichick somewhere uh, and uh, Parcells. Mm-hmm. That tree of coaches has branched to to them, to the Stoops family. Well, and also, Stoops played at Iowa, Bob, uh, and played for Hayden Fry, you know, who just passed away okay, yeah. this past week. Yeah. And uh, was Iowa's longtime coach. So that got him in a lot. I mean, you know, how many brothers? You got three. You got Mark, uh, Mike, and Bob. Bob. Yeah. And three of them's been head coaches. I mean, all of them's done well. So, well, yeah, but. The Wildcats, wow. I mean, 8-5 and five again for them. 18-8 and eight in two seasons. Kentucky and Tennessee's hanging on. They are. And it's good for It's good for our conference here and SEC for us to have uh, all of our teams to, to do well. And speaking of doing well, our other SEC team down the road here didn't par very well in the 33rd Outback Bowl. Let's talk about all the Minnesota Titans. Auburn, Minnesota. Boy, I got this one way wrong. I, I, I underestimated Minnesota. Maybe I overestimated Auburn. I, well, you know, we've known Auburn. Auburn's had some offensive trouble all year. But they haven't had defensive trouble. And they had defensive trouble against Minnesota. 500 yards of offense. Just well, this is the 33rd time of the Outback Bowl. Did you know it started out as the Hall of Fame Bowl? No, but I remember that when it used to be a Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame ball. I remember that. When well, in, in history here, starting in 90, uh, Auburn's had four visits there, counting this year. They beat Ohio State in 90, 31-14. And in 2010, they beat Northwestern. I remember that game, 38-35, went to overtime. Yeah, that was a good one. Then they lost to Wisconsin, 34-31 in overtime in 2015. So they're two and two in the bowl. The SEC is 17-13 in that bowl. The Big Ten's 13 and 18. Uh, looks like. Speaking of Minnesota, let me give you a little story here. Minnesota, and we have a friend who uh, claims they have, and they do, they do. He they goes have, on they that. They got seven titles. They have 18, they have seven titles. 18 conference titles. Wow. Okay, so I'm looking into Minnesota, studying a little bit about them. Last time they were claimed champions, as back then the news writers put them number one. They played in the 61 Rose Bowl. They lost to Washington, by the way, 17-7, to to a quarterback named Bob Schalbert. Schalbert was Washington's quarterback. Talk, mm-hmm. The guy lost his eye when he was seven with an incident with a firecracker. Mm-hmm. Going back at Washington. The year before, in 60 Rose Bowl, he beat Washington. I mean, he was Washington. He beat Wisconsin. Won the MVP, beats Minnesota, which claimed the title that year. So when Minnesota was actually national champions in '60, yeah, yes. but Washington beat. That's when they yes. named it before right. the bowl. But coach, to put into a kid named Bob Shalbert here, six foot tall, two hundred pounds, has one eye. He was the first person to ever be a back to back MVP of the Rose Bowl, and he also played defense, Todd, mm-hmm. and he led the team with six interceptions in the game. So he had one eye. He had one eye and six interceptions. Uh, yeah. 
I had both mine had five in my career. Did you know they packed out 97,000 people in that game in 1961? 97,000 and 61. Hey, I was surprised that uh, Minnesota would bring the people out. Did you see how many people they had at that game the other day? I mean, I watched Alabama game mostly, but man, it was rocking there with Minnesota people. Score wound up being 31-24. Um, Minnesota had uh, <clears throat> 23 first downs. They had 279 yards passing. Auburn had 176. Minnesota, hold on now. 215 rushing. Had controlled the time. 37 minutes. They were two and three on fourth downs. Their pass completions were 20 for 30. And here's the note here that I had a big circle around. Auburn rushed the ball for 56 yards. Ooh. There's no way you're going to win a football game. 56. Nix was 17 for 26, 176 yards of touchdown. Whitlow had 24. Williams had 13 rushing. Little Bo had 12. And little Shivers guy had nine. Receiving, they moved the ball around everywhere. Bo throwed it to. Uh, six times to Schwartz, he had 49 yards, and he had uh, the Canella kid. Uh-huh. He had he had one big catch for 37, and uh, looks like Williams had four catches. A couple of other guys, uh, Hast- Hastings and we- uh, Wilson and Steve had one for 11. Uh, on defense, looks like uh, the Denson kid had seven tackles. Brown, uh, he only had three tackles and two assisted tackles. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if he's playing safe. Or if, if Minnesota just handled him up for I don't know, you know. Sounds to me like, I mean, I'm just going from what I know and what I hear here, you told me with the time of possession. Sounds like the defense just got wore out. I'm talking about tired. 37 minutes. 37 minutes and on Minnesota the field. Minnesota had the ball. So it sounds to me like the problem with the game here for Auburn was obviously the offense. You know, you got, uh, you got one series where Minnesota kicks off to them. The defense has stayed on the field. I think they gave up a field goal. Minnesota kicks off to Auburn. Auburn runs it back. Defense right back on the field. I mean, and this happened the whole game. Well, Dunn, he had, for Minnesota, Dunn had six tackles. And speaking of catching yards, to my pickings at Georgia, well, his yards, mm-hmm. Todd, Tyler Johnson had 204 yards receiving. On 12 catches. Tyler Johnson. And then the little Smith kid had 69 uh, rushing. And uh, Bateman had 49 receiving, and Abraham. Uh, and Abraham's good. 140 rushing on the day. For He's him. good. He He's was dragging good. people. They. It just seemed like they were. Boy, they, they were. Uh, Minnesota was excited to be there. They wanted to show that we're a, a legitimate team. We know we couldn't beat Ohio State, and they slipped around there and lost a game or two. But uh, a lot of these, they're going to lose some guys. But well, I mean, you look at Minnesota's body of work and. I'm not going to say it didn't look impressive. They did beat Penn State, but Wisconsin beat them three touchdowns. Uh, they beat Georgia State Southern by a field goal earlier in the year. It don't look real impressive, but, hey, we were wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was completely wrong. I They were 12 at the time, so they're going to probably wind up 10 or 9. Oh, I would think they're so. They're definitely going to yeah. move to the top 10. Um, looks like in the first quarter – uh, Auburn, number 13, Davis, he had, they had an early pick right out of the bat. It's not, first play or two, Auburn had got a pick. It seemed like Auburn had the momentum. Minnesota gets the ball, Auburn gets the pick. I'm thinking, well, this is probably what we're thinking. Mm-hmm. Well, they had to they wind up selling for three. They had three to nothing. After the, Gopher, the Gophers uh, made a stand in the red zone. Minnesota runs the ball very well down the field. This Abraham, they settled for a 40-yard field goal, tied at 3-3. Big touchdown, kickoff, return. Big momentum swing. Auburn takes the ball off the kickoff, boom. Mm-hmm. Takes it all the way down the sideline, touchdown. Auburn, 10-3. to 3. Auburn's D puts the stop, set them on three and out. Um, the Tut kid, and Auburn must the punt. Um, Christian Tut. Yeah, he, dro- he just dropped it. That, that wasn't good. So this first quarter is still going on. Yeah, you got the defense back out there again. Minnesota rushed the ball. They, they run the ball, Todd, again, right before the end of the first. Wind up making it 10-10. to 10. So in the second quarter, Auburn runs a trick play to turn over on downs. All right, again, Minnesota rushes the ball. They have a big play off of a screen play. They score on a, on a fourth and goal. Oh. 17 to 10. Nick's passes to Canella. Tied it up, bam, they're back in at 17, 17. Four minutes till half. I was thinking this at this time, it's tied. Minnesota's not gonna score anymore. 
this is Auburn's going to shut it down. They've adjusted right. four minutes to the half. SEC team's going to adjust here, and Auburn's going to prevail. Well, Minnesota had another big pass. The ball, uh, he got he got killed in the backfield. Abraham runs over people, runs mm-hmm. it all the way up to the twenty on the next play, and then Morgan hooks up with Johnson. The kid had two hundred yards for a, just amazing one-handed. Yeah, he said might be the play of the year. Wow, thirty-two seconds, you know, left on on the clock there. And it's twenty-four seventeen. Third going in the third quarter. They had a first drive uh, right out of the half. Nick's get sacked on the third and thirteen. That was a thing. So like all all their third downs. Which defensively, if you want to turn it up on third down, mm-hmm. they were getting a hold of Knicks. Uh, and then Auburn gets a stop. Like a good balance. This is when I'm thinking they would just have time. Auburn had a great balance going back down the field. They run it. Felt like they were going to get back in this thing. It was a good game at this time. Six minutes to the fourth quarter. So middle of third there. Minnesota gets the interception. Passes to Williams. And they hold on here. So then... Um, Auburn gets stopped. Booby goes back down and scores. Boom. Big time right here. Five minutes in the game. The fourth quarter here. 24-24. Then Minnesota's Morgan. He moves the ball. He comes right on down. But they come up short. Auburn got the ball back. Two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Uh-huh. This is where we're thinking. I, I don't know how they let them score up there. They just they just moved the ball. And they even had got to stop it one time. Auburn moves the ball down the field and Whitlow runs a little trick play on fourth and eight where the punter threw it. And this was, a, you know, where they were saying the guy was holding him. Uh-huh. He ran off down the middle of the field and they were holding him. So it winds up being there at the, at the end of the fourth quarter. It's fourth and one. Uh, you get a QB, gets a push there. Um, it, Auburn has the ball. So you got to go three and out, which that was the bad news. That's when it all kind of fell apart. He had a big pass from Morgan to Johnson, and mm-hmm. that's the one where he just scooted through it on the right side of the field, and he just blowed everybody. Threw it back across. Yeah. Kind of everybody running. Late 31-24. Minnesota got to, got to stop again. Another star. Put that by it. Whitfield stops him. This kid you talked about right. the game. Seven picks. Yeah. It led the team in tackles and had seven interceptions. So he was. They worked the ball. They worked the clock. The kid gets the big, the big one-handed play. The big, mm-hmm. the big kid in the middle on the fourth. Oh man, that was awesome. Fourth down. <laughs> the running back um, breaks off another tackle for a first down. Two minutes left. Miss Abraham's just killing them. That's ball game. It was thirty-one twenty-four was the final there. What well, I, I want to say something about this Auburn team, man. It's just about how amazing they are on some of this stuff. And I know they got beat and they got outgained two hundred and seventy yards. But if that tight end doesn't make that unbelievable one-handed grab, Auburn's got a chance to tie this game. Yeah, I've never seen a team like this. Yeah, they they, just, they all have bought into what Coach Fleck is selling, and they're believing. And they felt oh, when you hear their interviews early before the game, and then after you put it together, they were they were just glad to be playing in a ball game. Oh, yeah, they were. They were happy. They're fired up about it, and he's done a good job, and you know he don't get the greatest. Players aren't knocking down the door to go to Minnesota with, because of the weather. I mean, you know, it's cold. And it looks like Auburn moved the ball around pretty well. Like I said, Nick's was 17-26. What? But Whitlow had 24 yards. How, how, well, how does Auburn run the ball for 56 yards? You cannot win a ball game. 232 yards of offense, but yet they're still in the game. I don't – I mean – you know, they got outgained. I don't know. I've never seen a team get outgained like they do and still be in the game. Minnesota got past them by 100 yards and outrushed them by 150 and controlled the clock for 15 minutes more than them. No, well, they outgained them 200, 262 yards. I mean, 20 for 30 on pass completions. 20 for 30. You get a play here or there. You get a pick. The little trick play didn't work for Gus. Uh, Abraham had 140 on there. He was good. He was really good. And, of uh, course, the receiver. You know, he had 1,000 yards coming in. Tyler Johnson? Yes. He had 1,100 coming in, and uh, we showed, you know. Well, they're thinking, well, I've never even heard of this guy. No, their defense made some tackles. The Williamson guy had five. The St. Justice had five. I'm just kind of surprised how, I don't know, Auburn defensively, they, they missed some things here and there, but. I don't know, man. They're I think the main thing was the number of plays. It just sounds like they were on the field the whole game. Well, that was their plan, obviously. They were snapping the ball 
with seven, eight seconds right, on right. the clock. They were trying to control. What's well, it's a good game plan. I mean, that's what coaches do. Coach Flake did a good job. So hats off the Golden Gophers, and maybe they'll be working towards their uh, – Probably their, get close to a top ten finish. Working I mean. their, their next national – Championship. They ain't been in, you know, 50 years or so. So I 60. Know. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. This was possibly the best team they ever had. Yeah, and besides them I would uh, think. getting beat in the 61 Rose Bowl to a, to a one eyed quarterback. Well, I meant best team they've had. In, uh, let me change that. Since we've been watching modern football. football. Since we've been watching but it. Besides, since I started watching the Besides that, losing to a one eyed quarterback, I mean. Right, right. How do you lose to a one eyed quarterback? How do you talk about What do you say in the locker room after? You know, you just try that. <laughs> it's not. It wouldn't be easy. I don't know how they would do it. Handle the team. And I'm not trying to be funny here, especially if it was your non-throwing right eye. eye. Yeah. I mean, which it probably wasn't. <laughs> I'm assuming it wasn't that. But I mean, you're talking about next to impossible, and this guy <laughs> achieved the impossible. The interceptions to me is more impressive <laughs> than the than being the quarterback. Than being the quarterback. Six. I mean, it's not easy to intercept passes in college football. And especially in 1961, when they probably didn't throw the ball very much. Right, right. And I'm sure he was a hitter, too. Oh, I'm sure he was tough. Yeah. Well, what else you got for us? Over well, there? we're moving on to the Alabama game. All this right. is Alabama-Michigan in the Citrus Bowl. And a little background on this, Alabama is now 3-0 and in the Citrus Bowl. They won in 95, led by Jay Barker and Chairman Williams, and oh, finished 11-1 and that year, Alabama did. Only lost being to Florida, twenty four to twenty three. Well, Florida was good that year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and actually went and lost to Nebraska that year. Yes, and won uh, it the next year. Won the title the next year, ninety six. No, Florida, no way. Florida we're one year behind. They played. It was an actually the nineteen ninety four. We're one year, but Alabama did go eleven and one that year, and obviously that was in Florida's heyday. Danny Werfel yeah, right, yeah. was their quarterback. Yeah. And uh, then they played again in it in Saban's third year and beat Michigan, Michigan State, State yeah. forty nine to seven. Yeah. And uh, that was actually Saban's worst year, besides his first year when yeah. he went seven and six. He went ten and three that year, and this one thirty five sixteen. But I tell you, man, it was actually a pretty good ball game. It was. I thought uh, uh, Coach Harbaugh seemed like he had a plan, but again, quarterback play. Che just he, he missed on some a few passes, and then after the game, they asked him about it, and and Jim kind of him hauled around. It wouldn't really say, yeah, he missed the passes, right? But, right. You know, but he did. When Alabama looked sharp on offense, 490 yards. Uh, Mac Wilson threw for 327. Najee Harris rushed for 136. You talk about 200-yard receiving games. Judy, six catches, Boy, 204. Wow, he showed up. I mean, I heard somebody say, well, he's not done a whole lot this year. And that's true, I mean, compared to last year. Yeah. But he had a coming-out party. Now well, he's ready to go play for the big boys. <laughs> Make that money. 85-yarder, third play of the game. Yeah, yeah, yes. Third play. Third play. Then. And Forrest all the tight end looked great to me the other day. That yeah, he come back from injury. Yeah. And uh, I think Alabama, 16-14 at the half now. Yeah. Michigan kicked a 52-57 yeah. yard field goal to go up and be ahead at the half. But Alabama come back out second half, 21 nothing. I think Michigan gained 109 yards in the yeah, second half. Yeah, definitely there was a talk and some adjustment at halftime to say, you know, what is our purpose? We're we going to win this game. We're right. just going to keep tinkering around with them. So he got them focused. And, uh, well, the defense stepped up. I yeah. heard some people say that Michigan should have ran Charbonnet and yeah. Haskins more. Yeah. But they but they didn't. You know, we don't know why. I don't know that it would have made a difference. It could have. But uh, had Charbonnet had 84 yards on 13 carries. Didn't touch it much in the second half. Now, they're playmakers that we had mentioned last week. Uh-huh. In the games when I had reviewed some of their Ohio State games, Notre Dame, they were still playmakers against Bama. They were the ones that People's Jones guy. They were making plays. Right. Haskins, you had mentioned. Patterson, he made uh, some. Hutchinson, they were making plays. He played all right. Patterson did throw a pick, but uh, I just thought Alabama was just. And I was worried about it. You know, as an Alabama fan, that they would come in kind of flat, but they did not. No. At all, and had two players missing. I thought the guys that subbed. Where Terrell Lewis and Trey Diggs played well. Yeah, I agree. And uh, Xavier McKinney, he led the team with ten tackles. Uh, Man, he's gonna have to. His helmet comes off. <laughs> so, 
How many he, times in a game? He actually probably got away with the targeting in that game, but they didn't call it. And I like that. I like that, you know. Uh, Do you like it because he's Alabama fan? Well, no, I just like <laughs> the fact that they didn't call it. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, if it's something vicious across the middle and just a cheap shot, call it. Well, you have to take into consideration, and we've already talked about this, and we ain't going to beat on it no more. When the other player ducks their head in a defensive a defensive player, they're trying to make a tackle. And if he's even trying to do it right, the correct way of putting his head across the butt and his shoulder in the in the middle, well, if the you know the offensive player ducks, he's going to hit him. And they're going to they're going to hit. What are you supposed to do? So right. you know. But all in all, this was just a great way for the tide to go out. Uh, like I said, 490 yards. They finished the season. This is a good little stat. You'll enjoy this. Five players had over a thousand all-purpose yards for Alabama. This season. Obviously being Harris, Judy, Ruggs, Devontae Smith, and Waddle. That's on. And Waddle didn't have a, he didn't. He didn't have a big game no. the other day. Uh, but he did have over a thousand yards this year on returns and receptions. Yeah. And uh, five guys. You put five guys over a thousand yards all purpose. If they got these six juniors, six, if, if they come back, uh, they'll be, they'll definitely be the number one team in the country. I mean, Jones can get them the ball. I think Jones has looked good. I agree. I, I hadn't, I was, I was worried, you know, going to the Iron Bowl. But hey, I mean, besides the two you give to the other team, I didn't see anything. I thought wrong the other day. I thought he played really good. He, he makes his read. He steps up in the pocket. He even takes it. Took some hits. Knew he was going to get hit. Still deliver the ball downfield. And I'm going to tell you, you don't want nothing. You don't want nothing to do with Najee Harris late in the game. Maybe early. He just the tenth. You don't want to fool with him late. He tries to hurdle people. <laughs> yeah, I mean it'd be like that guy at a party that first of the night when he's not been drinking. You might want to get a hold of him then. But after he gets a few in him, <laughs> you better leave him alone. You better stay away from him. And I, I would compare Harris to that. I mean he's just. He carried players 10, 12 yards one time. I know. But now, I will say this about Michigan. I, I did That game was a little closer than the score. I agree. And uh, I thought Michigan played a very – they were a good team. Michigan yeah. was a good team. That's going to be a – they should have 10 wins on the year, aren't they? I think they finished with nine, nine and four. Nine and four, okay. They finished nine and four. Wisconsin finished 10 and four. Ohio State, obviously, 13 and one. Yeah. Big Ten had some good teams in it. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the only conference that really didn't show up and do right much in this thing, whole thing, was probably the Big 12. And ACC is, has uh, lost some close games. They held on. They didn't win, but they played, played good. Admirably. You Admirably, could, yes. You, you could say that they did. Uh, you know, with Florida State and. Well, Florida State should have won that game. Yeah, I agree. I mean, well, how many, six turnovers? Yeah. And at the end of the game, he's going to score. They're going down the field there and give the ball to 15, and he he fumbles it. He fumbles. He's your best player. He was just balling his eyes out over there, and I felt felt bad for the kid. You know, he he was trying. Of course, he didn't mean to do it. Well, you know, they really wanted to or needed to finish with a winning record, you know, and uh, I think we'll see Florida State back. I don't miss them a whole lot because when they were good, they were good. Buddy, man, they used to run the show. Bobby, they, they were the team to beat. When he was there, I don't know if you knew this, they had 14 straight years. I don't even think Saban's done this. 14 straight years where they finished in the top five. Yeah, that's amazing. Just to be a little guy from West Virginia. 14 you know, straight years. Just come from a humble background. and I listened to him speak. He was they won at, two in that He time. was at the Rock one time years ago. No, Bobby, Bobby Bowden was. Great speech. It was a good speech, you know, being humble and, you know, sticking to your roots and putting God first. And you know, mm-hmm. that's good. He's, he's a good guy. Oh, he is a good man. Well, what else we got, Todd? That's going to pretty much wrap it up as far as our bowls. I think the SEC actually, so far, 7-2 and two in bowls. That's better than any conference. So uh, I'd say for the SEC as a whole, you know, only lost – Auburn, Mississippi State are the only two losses. And they fired Coach Mississippi State. You hear they he, they let him go today. Oh, really? Yes. Mm. Yeah. So Ole Miss and yeah, Ohio, Mississippi State. Lane Kiffin being Ole Miss has, has may have shaken some foundations in the, in that side of the country over there, Mississippi area, because he's a good coach. Lane's going to do a good job over there. 
Did you see where uh, the coach for uh, Ole Miss was on Georgia's sideline? Yes. Uh, I can't. I don't even know his name. I forgot his name. I forgot his name. Yeah. Nobody will if crucify us yeah, over that. Yeah, guys, if you were listening, I'm sure some of y'all picked that up. He was right in there with us. He was with the players. Fired he was, up. He was pepping them up and arm hooking them. And uh, I, I guess Coach Smart felt a, a need to. So this guy gets fired. A month ago, and Smart just automatically brings him in. Well, you can just come help us the rest of the year. Well, I mean, four eyes are better than two, and six is better than two. You know, I mean, if you got a, a you know, sisters to hang around there and help. But well, anyway, guys, this is going to be the. We're going to wrap up here for a Sunday evening. With uh, thank you all again for tuning in, listening to wdkr.org again. Uh, find us on Facebook, the Matt and Todd Show. Uh, we got some stuff coming in. I'll probably have some stuff from. Uh, sideline reporter that I had down there uh, at the Alabama Michigan game. Got a few pictures and stuff. And uh, overall, it's kind of looked like we're going to wind the bowl games up. And um, from now on, next week, like I said earlier, we'll be doing LSU Clemson and kind of break that down a little more. Yeah, okay, uh, get, that's going to be a good one. We're probably going to get into some NFL playoffs. We got to talk about some Tom Brady. Coach Garrett at Cowboys is gone. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be something we can get into. Who's going to replace him? It's not going to be Ron Rivera. The Redskins did hire him. Right, right. So I guess uh, there's a lot more stuff to talk about, guys. We really thank you guys for listening in. Um, and uh, we're going to be right back with some side notes. We're going to kick around some stuff with our favorite college football players, BCS era, non eras, uh, guys we watched, my guys we didn't get to watch. Uh, and maybe a little bit about the uh, an 18 playoff uh, comments that we always have looking around. They break down LSU, how they've played against uh, some of their conference foes. So, again, guys, thank you for listening in. And uh, Big Matt Diamond Dean, man, we're right here. We'll be back for a side note. We're going to take a break. Y'all come back. You're listening to WDKR. Internet-based community radio serving Cherokee County, Alabama. WDKR.org. Welcome back, everybody, in Cherokee County and across the world. This is Big Matt and Diamond Dean sitting across from me here. Thank you guys for coming back and listening in to the Side Note Show. Uh, we're going to kick around the 18 playoff again just for a minute. Uh, it seems to me, Todd, that uh, as we get relaxed here, get our shoes off and just, just talk about some other things, the best two teams are playing right now. Right. Will the 13th. You agree? Yeah, and Ohio State was obviously the third best. I agree. But now, the, and there's only one question about one of them being in there, Oklahoma. Yeah. That, so they pretty much got it right, 75%. Yeah. So adding more, it kind of diminishes from the, the bowl, the other bowl games maybe at some point. Either way, the kids are getting to play in a bowl game. That's what's important is the kids getting to play and being, uh, you know, seen – in playing in a after season game, right, preparing themselves to maybe play pro, maybe go to the combine, and do those kind of things. So to add to that, I don't see how it's going to help any. A lot we talked about probably on our first show. We talked about maybe how kids may uh, be just setting out games. Right, right. You know, well, you go to 18 playoff, and I just think it might, that gets worse. It really takes away from these other bowl games. They're going to load manage and. It don't matter, you know, if he plays because they're going to win this game anyway. And five through eight, would any of the five through eight this year could have beaten any of the top three? No. You got Florida, Oregon. I don't think so. Baylor Utah, and Georgia. No. Florida. No. No. I don't even. I mean, Florida may have come close. Did any of them beat LSU or Clemson? No. No. 
So or Ohio State. No, right. So that team play off. We're gonna they, they're gonna have to get off the end. And it's something to talk about, and it's fortunate that they do because it gives us something to talk about. Well, I think it would cut down on some of the complaining about this number four spot. But well, but this year they just there wasn't nobody else to put in. Yeah, I mean they they bumped Alabama plum out. They was definitely making sure there was no way they could get in. Mm-hmm. They give Utah a chance to get in. They did. They, Oregon. They failed. Oregon failed against Arizona State there, and so Baylor. The, the, their chances were there. Mm-hmm. I think they this year they set it up to give up those teams a chance. It wasn't. Ba- it wasn't a bad setup at all. I mean, who else you going to? You had a choice between. You could have put Memphis in there. I don't think LSU would have had any trouble with Memphis. No, or Ohio State. Or uh, no, and Oklahoma, uh, I don't even know who else you could have put in other than Memphis. Oklahoma, Memphis. That may have been a good game. Well, I still <laughs> think Memphis and Virginia should have played in Florida and Penn State. Yeah, yeah. But but neither one of them ended up being bad games, so it's okay. Yeah, it all turned out for the best. Uh, secondly, I was going to dig around on Joe Burrow, how he performed against his – SEC counterparts, Florida, Auburn, Bama, and we're trying to enlighten to say, uh, my point is, what do y'all think? You know, do you think that Clemson's defense may be overlooked a little bit? It looks like on third down efficiency, LSU was nine for 17 against Florida, five for 18 against Auburn, six for 15 against Bama. Well, five for eighteen. That might have been why they only scored twenty-three against Auburn. Five for eighteen. All right. Total yards. Uh, LSU had four fifty-seven. Uh, uh, Florida had four fifty-seven against LSU's five eleven. Auburn had two hundred eighty-seven total yards against LSU's five oh eight, and Bama had five hundred and forty-one yards against LSU's five fifty-nine. That's a lot of yards to give up. <laughs> I mean, which Auburn doesn't gain a lot of yards anyway. But to 287, that was – how many yards did they have against Auburn? So either one of them gained close to 300. But they gained over 500. 511, yeah. LSU had 511. Had 508 against Did they had less than 500 in a game this year? Not against those three teams. <laughs> 511 Florida, 508 Auburn, 559 Bama. Wow. And, and then we're going to talk about Joe. What did he do? Well, it uh, looks like uh, – Passing was 311 Florida, 293 Joe. Mm-hmm. Joe hit Auburn for 321. Auburn only had 157. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Joe hit Bama for 393. <laughs> gotcha. and, and Bama hit them for uh, 418. So the Ooh. Bama roasted them in, in passing compared to Auburn or Florida. What 418. You would think, so, you would think with, with Tua, he's a good quarterback. Lawrence don't have as many weapons as Tua. Either. Or Trask. No. Trask I mean, they've got Higgins and Ross, who are awesome. ATN's awesome. <laughs> they can beat you. There's no doubt about that. And the thing I've noticed about Clemson's defense, they may gain 600 yards, but they got that Ben Hunt don't break defense. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, what about rushing? Looks like uh, Florida had 146, LSU had 218. <laughs> rushing with Auburn was 130. Auburn and 187 LSU and rushing with Bama was 123 LSU rushed for 167 against Bama so guys whatever you know um, think about this and you know get some comments go on our Facebook page and, and tell us what you think about is Clemson's defense being overlooked that's kind of the question here I personally think their defense is better than all three of those that's what I'm looking to, to, to crack into I I now, what is you got a team averaging 500 yards a game? What is slowing them down? 400? Yeah. <laughs> because uh, Bama had 559. I mean, Bama had 541 against them, and they lost the game by five. You know. Right. I mean, you still lose the game. You had 541 yards, and you lose. Time of possessions, the games were all kind of close. They led. Uh, Florida had the ball for 38 minutes to 21 minutes. That LSU. Florida LSU game was a very good game. Uh, Auburn had the ball for 26 minutes. Auburn had 33. Bama had the ball for 25 minutes. Auburn had it for 34. Bama had seven penalties and two turnovers. 
Auburn had 15 penalties and <laughs> one turnover. Florida had five with one pick. So uh, I, I, I believe Sounds like Florida played them better than anybody and everybody, yeah, all around. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. So now taking Florida and Virginia game, and let's see how they played each other versus how Florida and LSU played each other. I think that LSU's just not going to walk in there and win this game. No, no, definitely not. I'm sticking with my. I wouldn't team. think it's going to be a good game. It may come down to one of those. It may come down to field goal, Todd. Or it may go to overtime. I'll be shocked if it's a blowout by either side. No. I told you earlier about Ohio State Clemson in uh, percentages of points won by. Mm -hmm. That game was compared to Texas USC game. 03 Rose Bowl. Right. And it right. did turn out, it did meet up to what it we thought. It was a pretty good game. It was. But after watching them play in that game, you can't count Clemson out. Well, with Trevor Long, I mean, they were getting killed. He run the ball. You know, he had over, you know, over 100 yards rushing. Uh, that's not something maybe they accounted for. And, but now, LSU will have to account for him running. Now, does that, my thought of, of LSU trying to defend Trevor from running the ball, you know, well, that helped him. Yes, but you got to think about it. It's got to be in the. It's got to be on the table when their coaches are sitting there right now. Right now, they're talking about this game. Mm -hmm. You got to throw in there. Well, Trevor might take off with this if he runs that RPO. He pulls it. We got to have a spy on him. That opens up the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. You would think. I think LSU's defense is probably a little better than it's given gotten credit for it. and they, I think some of that has to do with how quick their offense scored. They tightened up after the Ole Miss game. They got some criticism and Coach O said that yeah, coaches right. had a meeting with the kids and they definitely you know, they turned tightened it, it up. Yeah. I mean seven against they give up seven against uh, Texas A&M who won their bowl game. Ten against Georgia who won their bowl game and I know they give up 28 against Oklahoma but I mean come on it was 49-14 at halftime. They could have scored 100 and yeah, they've done a lot off the pedal. LSU's a good team. Uh, they've had won a lot of games there at home. Uh, Two thousand four looks like they beat Oklahoma twenty-one fourteen. They beat Ohio State in 08, 38 24 Lost to Bama twenty-one to nothing in twelve. And they won both of those championships. So played for the championship every time there. Yeah, and one lost one to Alabama. What about you know they're saying LSU's the 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 best team of all time, and, and this is it's just us talking, guys. Y'all go on our Facebook and please comment and tell us what you think about this topic. Of um, the Clemson wins this game, they're thirty and zero. Why are they not mentioned? Why is that? Why am I saying this could be the greatest football team? We've never heard that. Thirty and zero. Now LSU's got to finish out, and if they do finish out in a glorified, I mean, a in a blaze of glory, and they have five hundred fifty yards. <laughs> Old yards, you know. But you're right. If Clemson wins, they've won 30 straight and two championships. it has uh, got to be some kind of – that's a dynasty. Yeah, I mean, Oklahoma had 47-game win streak. Right, and I don't think anybody's going to top that's, that. Not that's these crazy. Days. Who were they playing? I mean, my gosh, how good were they? Well, you know – 47? Talking about Dabo, he's 50. He's got two rings. Probably the best college football coach in, in modern day is Nick Saban. Mm -hmm. When he was 57, he had one. One ring. Davo's got two at age 50. And he's got six, five starts coming. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of that. Ohio State had the top scoring offense. Clemson beat them. You know, uh, they, they got some players. It's Isaac Simmons, the linebacker. Oh, he's awesome. He's awesome. First team on the He He's going to be the difference. Those guys are going to be the ones stepping there and making a difference. So. And actually, I don't know, this is just for who's interested one of the rotate one of the linebackers that plays a lot for Clemson is from Calhoun, Georgia. And I thought some people might find that interesting. Yeah. They were in the same region with Chatuga there for a long time and they put out some good players. But he I don't think he starts, but he plays a lot. Had actually had a sack on Fields the other night. He did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Balin Spector is his Balin name. Balin Spector. Well, so this is our side note show. Please go online there and comment and tell us what you think about it. Uh, again, we thank you for tuning in at WDKR. Hope everybody's having a good year besides all the rain we've gotten. But, you know, God knows best and He knows what we need. So, um, what do y'all think about 18 playoffs? We kicked around some stats here with 
LSU in the tape, facing their top three conference opponents. Um, LSU wins a lot of games at home. You know, uh, is LSU being over, you know, overestimated because they're playing at home? Why are we not talking about Clemson being right. thirty straight games if they do? And uh, you know, because Clemson did beat the number one. You're not hearing as much about Clemson. Everybody knows that it's, it's, it's the, LSU. It's show. the Heisman. It's Joe right. it, that you know they're they're in the light. So uh, you know, well you can't count Lawrence out if he's eighty three and two since ninth grade. It'll be three rings for Dabo. He's fifty. Mm-hmm. And have three rings, and there's won thirty straight games. Thirty straight. And, you know, I think they say a dynasty. About, what, are, what is a dynasty? I've, what makes it? What's the definition of dynasty? I've understood it is, and I got this on, a, on somewhere that I read. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, listeners, if you want to you know, go in there and comment and tell me what you think. I had read this, and it, it was about hockey. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was about hockey. Uh, that winning five, like five titles within eight or ten years, mm-hmm. that kind of spectrum, that, that's a real it's dynasty. kind of a dynasty. Yeah. What, did the, what was it? Why was the show named Dynasty? I don't know. They must have had five good years out of the 50 that they ran. That was a good one, too, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, so we're going to look out for Isaac Simmons. That's just somebody I wanted to bring up. We're going to talk more about him. And yeah, he's, uh, he, you don't hear a lot about him. You hear a lot about Chase Young, but you don't hear a lot about Simmons. He got over 100 tackles, 13 or 14 of them for a loss, and he intercepted a deep ball the other night, Matt. I know that's that's why I wrote it. I, that was the reason I a deep pass, there. not uh, one across the middle. He dropped back. They blitz the corner. He drops back to safety, and just reads Fields' eyes and goes and intercepts a deep pass. And this guy, he, he's awesome, and I'd heard of him, but not. He's overshadowed. There's Obviously, no doubt. The coaches believe in him, and uh, we're gonna kick that game around some more now. Uh, Thank you guys for listening on our side note show here at WDKR. Uh, we are going to now kick around some of our our top players, Mount Rushmore, and y'all are all welcome to tell us we're wrong or right or whatever you think. Uh, these are just, I got a lot of names here. We went through some stuff, some players that we watched, some players that we hadn't watched. So Todd, what do you, uh, we'll say, let's just say overall, Overall, best players that it don't matter if you've seen them play or not. Just the knowledge that you have with the game and college football. Well, obviously, and all the outlets pick him, and from what you've grown up in the South, you hear about him a lot. But I mean, it'd be Herschel Walker. I mean, he's everybody's guy when it comes. You go any, any list. Who's the greatest college football player of all time? And somebody's going to say Herschel Walker. He's always somewhere in the top three or four always on always list. always I think he just so dominant for the three years he was there you know he averaged 160 or 70 yards a game for his career and uh, I just I mean he's the main one of course obviously well, what about you who's somebody you but and Herschel still looks like a brick house that might can still take a few snaps right now have you seen him oh yeah I, yeah I, he's I good I didn't watch Herschel play much and no, I will say I was a little <laughs> I, I kind of caught him. I was a little too young. I didn't watch Marcus Allen either. I enjoyed watching Barry Sanders, though. That, I did see him play. You, you can go back to Dick Buckus and, and of course, Davey O'Brien. And, and I think I'd comment on one of those pages, uh, you know, why would you put Davey O'Brien there? The award is named after him already. Why does he have to be in the top players? We already know he's a great player. He is an award <laughs> named after him. Yeah, yeah. Me, personally, I like Bo Jackson. I grew up in that era. I'm here from the state. He's from this state. I watched him play. I saw him live. I really, it's not just his, I mean, we're talking football, but Bo did everything. And, and there's always these little stories you catch. I worked with a guy that went to school with Bo when I was at the, the tractor place over there at, with the Kubota, mm-hmm. pl- at the Kubota place there. And he said, same kind of stuff you hear, he would just grin and say, yeah, like he was you know, 14, 15 years old and he could dunk a basketball. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that, mm-hmm. and, uh, and it goes along now, which this probably shouldn't have anything to do with it. He's just a humble guy. He just right, he's, right. he's simple, loves to hunt, and he just uh, I mean to play baseball and football and then go pro and and catch a plane and you know Deion Sanders did it too at that time. Right. But right, for me, right. you know I like I like Bo Jack. He, he's my top guy. 
Um, uh, another people that we watched, I like Michael Vick. Love watching him. Play. Yeah, I enjoy watching Michael Reggie Vick. Bush. Reggie Bush is his all-time uh, player to me. I hate that he had to turn in his Heisman for something that happened, which had absolutely nothing to do with his play and ability. He still made the plays. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't get that turn in the Heisman for that. But anyway, Tommy Frazier. Uh, yeah, he was very excited. Tim Tebow, uh, Damon Thomason. Yeah. The, he don't get talked about a lot. No, he does His stats. And Not college, in college. His college number is just off the chart. And, of course, you said Barry Sanders, and I'll – I'll kind of say uh, Tommy Frazier. I think I said him. I enjoyed Danny Workful. I know he's not on the list. I enjoyed watching him yeah. play. Maybe more so than Peyton Manning. And I know I'm talking about SEC people mo- mostly, but uh, I did enjoy Danny Workful a lot. And uh, obviously, Ben Young. Oh, yeah. yeah. I hate I'm, just, I'm just throwing players around that I've enjoyed in my life. Yeah, and that's what we want to do. Just, it's a side note show. We just want to spark interest for comments and, and have people – but who they like, maybe who they grew up in different times and who they like watching play. I can't leave out Marshall Falk. See, I never watched Marshall Falk. All right, I'll tell you a little story here, a side notes. In uh, college. I had a little TV at my grandmother's house there, and I was flipping through the channels, the little antennas up, and had them adjusted, and somehow I picked up this channel, and uh, San Diego State's on. Weird-looking yeah. helmets, never seen this team before. Man, I like football when I was young there, so I just sat and watched the game. This guy is just showing out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, who is this guy? It's Marshall Falk. And he turned out to be fantastic in college. Didn't get a lot of talk because of where he was. Right. He was great in the pros. Well, let me mention one more person. He was great. Did I, Derek Thomas, that was not in the BCS area. Derek Thomas was a joy to watch. Him and Cornelius Bennett, but mostly oh, yeah. Thomas. 27 sacks in one season. Uh, yeah, that's... That'll probably never be eclipsed. That's, now, that's a Heisman... That's <laughs> more, and he did get in the top ten. Not six, to, not but he didn't get invited up there. Not sixteen and get to come up, but yeah, that, that's a lot of sacks. Twenty-seven in eleven games, not fourteen. Yeah, who's a special player? Because they didn't count bowl games back then. They didn't count on your statistics. No, I, I don't, I'm glad they they fixed. Yeah, they ought to go back and fix them. Now these are BCS era guys that kind of played that uh, a lot of you listeners may know. And uh, you can play share. And, of course, Miami's guys are going to make this list because God knows how many players Miami, Miami turned out. So many first-round picks. Um, Willis McGahee. Portis. Clinton Portis. Ed Reed. Yeah. Uh, Brent Lewis. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, you've already said Vince Young. Tim Tebow is definitely somebody you can't leave out. His pure leadership skills and seeing him, you know, after his career, he's, he's a good guy. And uh, what he added to the game was very enjoyable for me uh, to watch him play. What about Case Keenum, Case Keenum at Houston? He had a good career, good career. We didn't get to see him play a lot. Matt Ryan but. at BC. Yeah. You know, big players. Big Ben played Miami of Ohio. Uh, Peter Wart, get FSU. Peter Wart was pretty exciting. He got in a little trouble there, but he was very exciting. They won it his last year, too, so. Uh, Paul Amalu at USC. No, That's another great, game you got great. to put him out there. Oregon's LaMichael James. Forgot about him. He was awesome. Cam Newton. Cam Newton. He was a playmaker. Uh, Fitzgerald. Nobody can leave him out. What about Adrian Peterson, Oklahoma? Yeah, yeah. He was uh, obviously yeah. probably the greatest modern running back since Dickerson. Or to me, I mean, or Emmett Smith. He's been the greatest. He's the greatest in the last 20 years, I would think. I always liked Ricky Williams. Oh, Ricky Williams was awesome. People, yeah. they, uh, you know, people forget about him. Ricky Williams is great. No, oh, Ron Dane, yeah. There's a lot of players. Of course, you know, we didn't talk about, uh, you know, college-wise, because uh, well, I didn't get to see Walter Payton play in college, of course. Mm-hmm. But at a young age, as I followed Bo Jackson at a young age, I followed Walter Payton at the Bears. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was great. He's a Hall of Famer. Great I don't player. know how he did in college. He played at the small school. Yes. But I, I'm assuming he did all. I'm assuming he had more than five carries, oh, Jerry five Rice. yards. Jerry Rice is great, but have you seen him play at college? You know, Nobody. No. Did you got Sue on that list? Yeah, Sue was very excited. Don Sue player. was. A, he was a. He played nasty. He had an old school spirit to him. He really did. Mm-hmm. I think he was raised by his grandfather, and uh, he's just a tough player. I always enjoyed watching him play there in Nebraska. Man. I, 
I got to say that the player I've enjoyed the most, though, probably, and I don't know why, and he had good stats, but I enjoyed McFadden from Arkansas. I really enjoyed watching him play. He was a playmaker. And for me, he's probably the number one. I, I, I'm on. I'm, Bo Jackson, Michael Vick was some of the most shiftiest. Bo. Michael Vick did things that were just not normal. And he was left handed, so it kind of looked weird. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a small guy, and he went through some, some troubles. And he worked through those things, and, and he come out and, and, and done good. And uh, we see him on some talk shows every once in a while. He just could make a play, throwing it or running it. He was just amazing to watch the Big Tech. Oh, he was. He was. He was, and they actually played. In, you know, Florida State won it that year, and they played them good in that in the Sugar Bowl. Yeah. Which I guess was the BCS title game, right? It yeah. would have had to be, yeah, because they started the one and two matchup. Ninety eight when. T. Martin won. Yeah, that was in 99. Yeah. So it would have been. No, Peyton Manning didn't win Tennessee's title. T. Martin won. It was T. Martin. A lot of people think that. That's ironic. You know, here they are great with Manning, greatest quarter, one of the greatest players ever, and they win it the year after he left. Oh, we got a cash prize giveaway tonight, Todd, if anybody can answer this question. Uh, who, uh, who was Brent Favre's first pass thrown to? And we ain't gonna, we ain't, we're not going to say who his first completion as a pro quarterback. Uh, you can't Google it either. Yeah, just, just yeah. I, but I know everybody will. But it, it's <laughs> you get a dollar if you win it. Yeah, it's just kind of funny, and uh, it's just something to add. Uh, again, we appreciate y'all for tuning in tonight, and uh, we're gonna put our shoes back on and uh, and uh, go in here and cook some some pork chops and green beans. <laughs> We got some fennel seed put on that, and that's some good seasoning. <laughs> and we got that gunpowder seasoning, too. Guys. Stay away from gunpowder. It's making you a little crazy. Try the gunpowder seasoning. Don't do you it. Get it. No, it's for real. Crazy. Not real gunpowder, but the gunpowder. Oh, okay. It's good. Okay. You can find it at Walmart. Try it out. Well, thank you guys for listening in. We're having a good time, and uh, uh, God is good, and he's given us the opportunity to do this. We thank Shane for all his hard work, and uh, again, thank you guys for listening in to WDKR Side Note Show. And, uh, we're going to wrap it up, and uh, next week we're going to kick around over LSU and, uh, and Clemson. And so Should be a great matchup. It's going to break down. Like most of the bowl games, we're kind of done with all that, and we're going to start digging around some NFL and a little NBA probably and uh, uh, talk about some local stuff maybe that's going on around here, some basketball. They're kind of getting in the, the mix of things. So uh, we appreciate you guys again for, for listening in. Uh, we're having a good time doing this, and uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed it. Appreciate it. Hope everybody had a, a great holiday season. It's time to for us to all get back to work now and then start this next week off right. Kids are going back to school Tuesday. I think some teachers are going back Monday, Monday. to get ready. Yeah. So, uh, again, thank you guys for listening. WDKR Side Notes. This is a Matt and Todd show. Big Matt and Diamond Dean. We're, we're signed out, guys. Love y'all. God bless. God bless.